how dare you being late the 13 or the third fastest 110 meter high hurdle time of all i mean hey you, you know i run fast but uh, i do a lot of other things very very slow so <laughs> getting getting back from training is is one of those thanks for having me eddie so when you say training right now what what are you training uh, like are you uh you, is it for football is it for for track um I was, I'm doing track stuff right now. So I just, uh, ran in New York two days ago and I spent the, the day yesterday traveling, um, to Oslo, Norway, cause I have a competition here on Thursday. But, uh, yeah, so I, I fell asleep and kind of slept during the day, you know, with a jet lag thing. My, my go-to is to just, uh, sleep when I'm tired. So I woke up around six 30 and I was like, Oh, I gotta go. I gotta go trade. So got on the bus and did that. And then, you know, I'm, I'm back from there. Where would you train in Oslo? Uh, just we, just to, at the practice track. I just I did like a light little shakeout, just moving around. Uh, not too do, much. I didn't really do any hurdle stuff. I just kind of warmed up. Do you have a coach that travels with you? Uh, sometimes my coach Jamie Cook travels with me, but he didn't come on this trip. Um, he has some some stuff going on. Uh, so you, you know, just back home. So you got to do it all by yourself then. Yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm 27 years old now. I think I can handle it. <laughs> I'm an adult. I know, but from from my days of running, I needed somebody to push me all the time, all the time. I mean, I could. I mean, it's always nice to have them around, but I don't uh, I don't necessarily need you know need them. Worst you know worst cases, I can I can handle most everything on my own. Are you on a track club, or do you just run by yourself independently? Uh, independently, I think, uh, you know, technically I'm sponsored by Nike. So when, you know, my name pops up on the, the meet sheet, it'll be like Devin Allen, Nike. Um, but everything I do is just me and my coach and, you know, my support staff, my manager, my physical therapist and stuff like that. So when you go to the Eagles, are you automatically a Nike athlete at the Eagles? Uh, I would assume so. That's pretty cool. Uh, I think, I think that whole, you know, umbrella of sponsorship would hopefully play into football as well. I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, that that's got to be pretty cool. Like you were at Oregon, Nike's around there. They're like in the town, aren't they same town? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so U of O um is in Eugene actually where Nike originated, but Nike headquarters is just about an hour and 45 minutes north in Portland. Okay. Did you ever meet Ryan Fisher? Or I'm sorry, Ryan, Ryan Flaherty. Fisher. Ryan Flaherty. Oh yeah, yeah, I know Ryan Flaherty well. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah good, good. Flaherty, Flaherty are close. Um, he actually wrote some of my program um, that I still do in terms of my my training and, and weightlifting and stuff like that. Um, you know, I actually met him twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen, and he does some really good things. So he's awesome. Yeah, he's a genius. I've had him on the show a bunch of times. I just talked to him the other day, and uh, oh, awesome! He's such a good guy and so knowledgeable. Like I. You know, back in the day when I ran track, nobody knew anything. You like you would get uh what's his name from Canada? Charlie Francis's like Bible, and that was all you had for like extra curricular stuff. But mm-hmm. now there's just so much information. And what I'm wondering, like a guy like you that is you're the, the best of the best, are you writing the stuff yourself or like who where are you collecting information to like get yourself faster? How do you do it? Yeah, so I think uh, you're pretty spot on in terms of the the day the data available now is is incredible in terms of we can just Google or YouTube pretty much anything you want to find out. But I, I keep track of my programming pretty well, you know, and and you know writing down notes and stuff like that. But I think it's a mixture of what my coach my coach's knowledge. My coach has been coaching for over 20 years now, um, and at a high level, he coached at Penn to start, and then coached at uh, U of O for eight years or uh, seven years. And then now he's the head coach of the Naval Academy. Um, and with that being said, and as an athlete, you learn from other athletes, from other coaches and coaches do the same as well, right? Like, you know, my coach, coach cook, and even Ryan Flaherty, um, you know, took some knowledge and some data from other places and put it into their program and, and kind of practice what works and why, you know, me and my coach, uh, coach cook mesh so well is we kind of found the magic formula in terms of like, what makes me a great athlete. And then doing that and then also improving on that, right? Like, so me being a great athlete, especially hurdlers, me being explosive and strong and fast. So let's be explosive. Let's be strong. Let's be fast and just 
you know, amplify all that stuff. And then, you know, on top of that, also listening to your body. Um, not that I'm old, but I'm more like seasoned and more veteran. So I understand like, you know, rest is really important. Um, and just kind of taking some time off. I mean, I had COVID 15 days ago now, and I took about seven or eight days off. And my coach was like, hey, this is actually going to be good. I mean, it's not good that I had COVID, you know, because I was sick for a few days. But it'd be, it's going to be good for your body to just rest because we've been pounding it hard. I've been in Philly doing off-season training, doing football stuff, lifting, running around. And then on my off days, you know, from football, I was training on the track. So I was pretty much six, seven days a week. And so to get, you know, a week off and then to kind of ramp back up the last week, obviously it, it paid off because I ran 1284. Um, That's yeah, amazing so. that you did that. that. That makes a lot of sense though with like the, you know, just resting your body like that and coming in totally rested. That's, that's awesome for sure, though. For sure. Did you, excuse me, did you lose any weight during COVID at all? Uh, no, no, I didn't no, lose any weight. Uh, I, I, was I curious mean, if, nothing substantial, maybe like a, a pound or two. I mean, I was, I think I was sick for maybe about 36 hours. Yeah, that was me too. Just like fever, fever and stuff like that. Um, and then I started feeling better. I had a, like, I had some really weird, um, uh, like lymph node back pain, you know, where your lymph I had that too. I had that too. Yeah, it was so weird. What the, the, the first, so the first day, so I think I had COVID on Saturday or Friday because my back was really bothering me. And then Sunday is when I got a fever. Um, and then like that day, Sunday and Monday, I like couldn't walk. No, my back was hurting so bad. It was like a piercing back pain right above, like right at the waistline, just like right just like someone had like stuck a knife in there kind of thing right in the spine. And I was like, this is some weird virus that like that everybody's getting this weird little pain right here. Like yeah. that's what I don't want to get into conspiracy theories or anything, but as soon yeah. as I got that pain, I was like, this is definitely engineered. Like, like yeah. this was a created virus, like the way it's like affecting this spot right here. But well, um, yeah, you know, my, my, my physio uh, therapist, um, Anna Hartman, I work with and, I work with a guy in, in Annapolis where I trained named Kyle Atwell. And they uh, were just, you know, they, they're really in, ter- in tuned to the nervous system, right? And like all, like our nervous system stem, right? Like it starts at the brain through the neck and then it kind of spreads out through that like area, the pe- mm-hmm. like the pelvis, the mm-hmm. low back, which is why if anybody ever like slaps you on the low back, it stings really bad because there's a lot of like sensory nerve nerves there. And with all the nerve endings, there's a lot of like, uh, you know, lymph fluid and stuff going through there because you know, you got to keep those like those sheaths of nerve moving. And I think that just gets inflamed with the virus. And, and literally you're like, oh, you're like, you're putting so much pressure on that ner- those nerves. It feels like a knife. Right. Yeah. So that's that's what they explained to me. And I was like, yeah, it makes a lot of sense because that's what it feels like. Like you said, I was laying in bed, like trying to fall asleep. And I was like, I can only fall asleep in this position. Like this is the only position that doesn't hurt. Yeah, it was it was, it was a weird thing. Uh, forgive me for nerding out. But like, you know, I have a. Yeah, a little bit of a background. I ran some college hurdles and, uh, and I'm just a huge fan of yours. So, uh, it's not, it's, it's rare that a comedian cares about hurdles, <laughs> but, uh, I am, I am not the fastest hurdling comedian in the world. There was a, I'm not even the fastest comedian hurdler from the university of Pittsburgh. There was a guy before me named Mario Joyner, who is a famous comedian. He tours with Seinfeld and he had a, he had better times than me, but we ran. Uh, he ran at the same time as Roger Kingdom. So Roger Kingdom, uh, you're from Arizona, F- correct? Yeah. yeah. Yep. I know Roger Kingdom well. I was just going to say because he was coaching at the Arizona Cardinals. He was a yep. strength he was coach. Strength conditioning, yeah, strength and conditioning. Yep. So did you get to work with him at all when you were down there? Because you were you were a standout in high school. Um, no, I'm not. Yeah. I, I mean, I was a good athlete in high school, but no, I, did, I never worked with him. Um, obviously there's like a mutual respect because he's, you know, two time Olympic champ takes a lot. It doesn't matter how fast you run and he's run 12 seconds as well. So he's a, a great athlete played, um, football in college too. And so, uh, yeah, I think there's like a mutual respect there. I know of him, and we've, uh, you know, briefly chatted once or twice and, um, so it is kind of cool. I mean, like those guys were not Nehemiah texting me after I ran twelve eighty four. That's like, awesome. That's pretty awesome. That um, is awesome. Alan, John- Alan Johnson texted my coach, like within ten seconds of the race. He said, "My I talked to my coach. He's like, yeah, Alan Johnson, the first person to text me 
I was like, that's pretty cool. Like some of the, like the best hurdlers in the history of the sport. So like, you know, tuned in on this. 